In Nom Nom Galaxy, you control a corporate wage slave as you tear through an alien world looking for ingredients to make soup at an industrial scale and lead your company to the head of the galaxy's entirely soup-based economy. No, really. I'm down with it. I mean, I love soup. When I was living by myself, I was eating homemade soup, like, literally 80% of the time. The rest was cereal. Anyway, the game takes a lot of cues from 2D environment manipulation games like Terraria and adds in time and resource management. It's actually pretty interesting, and a lot of fun when things are going smoothly, but I think it misses the mark in a lot of key areas. You control your little astro worker as they use their buzzsaw to cut through the terrain and their fists to punch the various plants and indigenous creatures. You collect matter from the environment that is used to construct your facility, which is made up primarily of corridors, soup machines, and rockets, which are used to ship your soup across the galaxy. The buildings are technically subject to gravity, but so long as one piece of it is resting on terra firma, anything attached to it will be fine. So you have a lot of freedom to build where you want, but your rockets do need to have an unobstructed upward path, lest they explode and waste their precious soup cargo. Any soup machine you build will start out blank, and placing any two ingredients from the environment into it will set its recipe and it will begin making soup. Different recipes are worth different amounts of money when sold, but it's pretty arbitrary what's valuable and what isn't. And, except for when you make a recipe for the first time, the game doesn't tell you how much that recipe is worth, and for some stupid reason you can't view the recipe list while playing. So the only way to make sure you're getting the most money for your work is to memorize which recipes are the good ones. Once the recipe is set, you cannot change it, so if you want to make more flavors of soup, you need to either build more machines or destroy the ones you don't want and replace them. But since destroying any piece of your factory will cause anything on the outside of that piece to lose power and become detached from the structure, doing so has the potential to pretty much ruin everything. But you can accommodate by building struts and extending those sections out so they're moored on the environment. So it's not impossible to make changes, but it does require a lot of advanced planning, just to make simple changes. I'm all for being given the opportunity to be rewarded for proper planning and using the old thinking muscle, but a lot of the ways the game restricts changes are pretty obnoxious. As well as the soup machines, other pieces of the factory need to be destroyed in order to be changed, even corridors. If you built a long vertical section of corridor and decide or realize later that you wanted one or more of them to be a T-junction, you're kind of screwed, because destroying a piece in the middle will cause the newly detached pieces to immediately fall down. It got to the point that I was using T-junctions pretty much whenever possible, just in case I wanted an opening sometime in the future. It's kind of stupid that you can't just easily add an opening to an existing corridor section. While running around the environment, frantically gathering ingredients and then hefting the massive soup cans into your rockets yourself may be fun and entertaining, there is a better and more efficient way to get things done. Actually, no, it's neither of those things, so it's a damn good thing there's another way to get things done. Using the money you make from selling your soup, you can hire several different types of robots to automate the functions of your factory, making your efforts in the field go that much farther. The standard worker bots will pick up any item they come into contact with, be it an ingredient or a can of soup, and place it into the first object that item can interact with. Placing ingredients into any soup machine set to accept it, or placing cans of soup into the rockets, or handing them to the hefter robots that will automatically toss them up or down vertical corridors. There is also a separate hefter robot that will do the same thing with ingredients. By filling a corridor with soup machines and plenty of workers, you can conceivably stay outside of your factory and just pass ingredients down to them, and if you've laid out your factory properly, the network of workers and hefters will take care of the production and distribution of soup themselves, and you can focus on toiling in the fields and hunting grounds. But there is a way to automate even that, technically. When you destroy a fully grown plant, it will give you two ingredient pieces. The smart and responsible thing to do would be to take one piece and replant the other securing a supply for future soup-related endeavors. But you can also bring it all back for that extra push of productivity. It's an interesting risk and reward mechanic. But anyway, you can build a farmer bot which will automatically cut down any fully grown plants and combined with the dog robots which will replant any ingredients it finds, you can automate the cultivation of produce. 
throw in a worker bot to carry off whatever the dog doesn't get to first so it can pass some ingredients to the workers on your soup production line, and you can pretty much put your feet up and call it a day. Except that setting up this kind of operation is a lot more of a chore than it should be. First off, you need a flat patch of ground, and with the buzzsaw being a buzzsaw, precision is not easy. And even though you can grab and put down squares of dirt, it's really clunky and difficult to put them where you want them. And then you need to put plants on it. There are a lot of factors that play into how quickly plants grow, or if at all they grow, and I really don't understand what they are. It just feels inconsistent. There are special oxygen patches and plants that will generate them, but not only will a farmer bot cut those down too, like an idiot, but it often doesn't feel like it's actually helping and it takes the damn things forever to grow. Even with the option there, it rarely felt viable since there are so many factors to account for and it's a difficult gamble to waste soup making time on something that might not even pay off. Not to say you're really strapped for time in Nom Nom Galaxy, but you do have a time limit. Though you can play without the competition, when playing a map in campaign mode, you have an unseen soup competitor that will also be producing soup and you need to stay ahead of them to gain control over the market. It doesn't escalate much in terms of difficulty. Throughout the whole of the campaign, so long as you're working hard enough to keep two rockets relatively busy and maybe three in the later levels, you'll do fine. To spice things up, sometimes certain ingredients will gain or lose favor in the market and cause soups made with them to garner more or less of the market share than they would. Again, since it can be such a pain to switch out soup recipes, adapting your production to these shifts can be frustrating. While the time crunch is never actually so severe that it makes matching your competition difficult, that's on the assumption that you're spending the whole time working and not, say, exploring the environment which the game actually does quite a bit to try to persuade you to do. On every map, you'll be informed of some treasure trove or AWOL robots that are in some vaguely defined area of the map. But these maps are huge, and you've got soup to make, damn it! You can't go try and attempt me with treasure when that is something that is going to explicitly interfere with my ability to make soup. Maybe I just really like soup, but I don't need a more complicated objective than that. I do like one aspect of the exploration, which is that if your factory starts to run low on power, you can build a generator for it. But in order for it to function, you need to find an energy crystal and bring it back. They will be pointed out on the edges of the screen, so they're easy to find, but they're heavy so it can be tricky getting them back. This makes sense in the context of the soup making because it's necessary to the function of your factory and implied that you're going to try to do it quickly. Other than that, venturing out does nothing for you. Even if you do find some rare monster nest or something else that actually is related to making soup in your exploration, setting up the infrastructure to efficiently get those ingredients back to your production lines is going to be incredibly expensive and time consuming. And it will always be better to just keep working with the same mundane ingredients. I guess, technically, you can build a generator and make a smaller outpost to process those meaty monster baits into delicious soup, but A, you'll need to clear a path for rockets to take off from it, and if you're deep underground, that may be impossible since you have no way of destroying rock until you unlock the bomb robot in one of the later levels, B, there's no real way to automate the slaughter of wildlife, so you'll be stuck there punching the crap out of sentient corn for pretty much the rest of your natural life, but that won't work because, see, your factory gets attacked periodically. For all the other frustrations, nothing in the game is as irritating as the combat, though using that term is being extremely generous. It sucks. So first, invaders. Every once in a while, your competitor will send mercenaries to attack your factory. They'll spawn wherever they friggin' want, sometimes inside your damn factory. I mean, sure, whatever. They'll start busting up your factory and workers, but they're not very effective. They take a really long time to do any real damage, at least do important stuff, but they can jack up your corridor pieces pretty easily, which can ruin everything. You can hack them up with your buzzsaw, but that's dangerous to use inside your facility for obvious reasons. You can punch them, but touching any enemy will hurt you automatically, which is really, really dumb. You can build turrets, but they are friggin' useless. Not only do they have crap range, but they miss most of the time even at point-blank anyway. 
Later on, I just stopped bothering and would just buy a shotgun and build a bunch of ladders on the roof and defend the homestead that way. I never truly felt threatened. All these invasions accomplish is to distract you from making soup. And it is painfully obvious that that was the intent, as many of the invaders will just wander around, sometimes running away, sometimes never even finding your base or getting caught on a nearby piece of the environment until you give up your vigil and go back to work. These invasions are stupid obnoxious bullshit, and I hate them. They're not fun, they're not challenging, they're just cutting into soup making time. A terrible crime indeed, but I'd like something with a bit more suspense, you know? You also have to fight wildlife if you want their relatively valuable ingredients. Most creatures have a nest that they will spawn from, and if you attack the nest or one of the creatures, they will all turn hostile. The buzzsaw is useless on most of them, so you need to get punching if you want to make the fanciest soups. But they attack you by touching you. Specifically by moving to overlap your sprite so you can't punch them anymore, and then you need to move to the side, and then they just do it again and ah! It's stupid, but it doesn't end there. Even when you defeat one of the beasties, a replacement spawns immediately. And carrying away the ingredients is really frustrating because if you get hit by anything while carrying an ingredient, you drop it. And the control is not good enough to facilitate actively dodging swarms of unpredictably bouncy fanged tomatoes. I usually ignored creatures altogether, as the extra money never felt worth the frustration. The combat could have been improved, let's say. For one, by making it less awful. Or just removing it. Nom Nom Galaxy combines two of my favorite things, micromanagement and soup. Successfully building an efficiently automated factory can be really satisfying and enjoyable if you're into that sort of stuff. I frequently found myself excitedly brainstorming ways to expand my production or improve the workflow as I was making trips back and forth gathering ingredients. I was having fun! But all too often that fun would come to a screeching halt due to an invasion or a small alteration destroying half my facility. Soup shouldn't be this frustrating. You just put some vegetables in a big pot and forget about it for an hour and a half. This game definitely has its strengths, but I can't overlook such severe frustrations. Nom Nom Galaxy gets a 2 out of 4. It has some really satisfying time and resource management mechanics, but they screwed it up with a bunch of bullshit. The combat is atrocious, it's too complicated to make alterations to your factory, and they tried to add exploration, but doing so is pretty much antithetical to the goals of the game. By all means, give it a try, but only if you're into management sims. Or soup. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you're interested in seeing more reviews.